Sorry for keeping you waiting so long. Half an hour? Let me tell you, she always does this. If it were up to me, let me just whisper it to you so no one hears. If it were up to me, I would be having four patients in an hour. This way we have four times the patients and four times the pay. I honestly don't know what kind of business model she's doing. Like, she's gonna go broke. Obviously you're happy with it. All the patients are happy with it. You guys get so much tender love and care from her and she makes you feel heard, blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you, okay? I've been working in the healthcare industry for so long and I've never seen a doctor like her, okay? That spends this long with each patient, ugh. And I told her, if you're gonna have one hour long patient visits, you better charge like it, but she doesn't. She charges these appointments dirt cheap. Oh yeah, these Monta sleep masks are so high quality and they work so well. I mean, I use one, but she gives them to you guys for free. Like, come on, what? Okay, you know what, I'm done ranting, but let me tell you, you didn't hear it from me, okay? Because I don't want to get fired. But let me tell you, she is straight out of med school, so she doesn't know what she's doing. And I warned her. Okay, we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go call her, okay? I'll see you later. Dr. Sunita, your patient has been waiting for you for half an hour. Better go in. Oh, I'm sorry. Has it already been half an hour? Okay, see you. Bye. Hi, it's Dr. Samita. Can I come in? Thank you so much for waiting. <sighs> yes, it has been a busy day. Yes, so many patients with sleep troubles, but I'm here now and I have the rest of the afternoon with you. Okay? All right. Can you start by telling me what your name is? Okay, just making sure that I know how to pronounce it. What a beautiful name. Okay, and your age, date of birth? Mm -hmm, perfect. Okay, just going to ask you a few very simple questions, just basic routine questions, okay? What day is it today? Mm hmm Okay. Friday, yep. And where are you? Go go sleep clinic, that's right. Mm hmm And what are you doing here? because you're having insomnia. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. All right, so I am all ears. Go ahead and tell me what your sleep issues are and I'll just be taking a few notes, okay? I'm sorry, that must be frustrating. Yeah, I definitely see that in a lot of my patients, having trouble performing well at work and school. Absolutely. 
we're here to help you, okay? We're gonna help make it a lot smoother for you at work. Okay. And was it difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or both? But you two wake up during the night. Okay. And why do you wake up? Is it because you need to grab a drink or you need to go to the bathroom, for example? No, you just suddenly wake up. Interesting. Do you sleepwalk by any chance? You do? Oh. Oh my. <laughs> well, it's very inconvenient. So I am this, okay. How often does this happen? Okay, so not too often, but yeah, it shouldn't be happening. Um, normally during your REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement, this is when you're having your dreams, your muscles should be paralyzed to stop you from acting out your dreams. But if you are getting up and acting out your dreams, then there's something that's not working properly within your central nervous system. So we will definitely look into that. We're definitely going to do a sleep study, maybe a few weeks out, okay? So be sure to do that. And how often do you have trouble sleeping? Almost every night. Wow. And this has been going on for about a year, you've said. Okay. And what happened a year ago? Anything? stressful, traumatic, anything at all that you think might have contributed to your sleep issue? Oh, yeah. Breakups can definitely do that for sure. It can be quite traumatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how are you healing from that? just hasn't been the same since. I hear you. Okay. Well, the way I see it is, with sleep medicine, we have to make sure that we're treating the whole person. So it's not just your physical symptoms and not just using medication to suppress your symptoms. For example, benzodiazepines can be very helpful for sleeping. However, it really doesn't address the root cause of why you're having trouble sleeping. And it sounds to me like for you, it might be a more traumatic cause, but we're going to keep looking at the different layers. Oftentimes with insomnia, the causes are multifaceted. Yes, that's definitely the case in my experience and in the experience of many of my patients. Yes. Okay. Speaking of medication, do you take any medications for sleep or have you in the past? Okay, you've tried melatonin. Has it worked for you? Not too much, okay. And what dose did you take it at, the melatonin? Okay. Was this prescribed by anyone or did you just get it over the counter? Over the counter just to try it. Got it. Okay. And you don't use it anymore, correct? No, because it's not helping you for sure. Now, do you have difficulty staying awake? like throughout the day. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, a few more questions just so we can rule out or rule in other conditions. 
Do you ever have a creeping, crawling, or uncomfortable feeling in your legs, which gets better after you move them? Okay, sometimes, uh-huh, how often? A few times a month, okay. Do your arms or legs jerk during sleep? Not that you know, okay. Do you snore loudly? Has anyone ever told you? Oh. Okay, well, snoring could be a part of the insomnia picture, but do you sleep with a partner or with someone at night? Not at the moment, okay. All right. Yeah, I can possibly allude to some respiratory issues, maybe some allergic problems. So we'll definitely take a look inside your throat and your nose, as well as your ears and eyes, just the whole head. Yeah, probably check your lymph nodes as well. Okay. Do you ever gasp, choke, or stop breathing during the night? Oh, uh-huh. How many times has that happened? Two times in the past, okay. So for this, I'm kind of thinking about sleep apnea, which can be pretty serious. So we'll definitely evaluate that further in your polysomnography, okay? Any muscle weakness? And have you been sick recently? And we'll definitely check on that as well. Do you have a chronic health condition? Not that you're aware of other than the insomnia? Okay. And other than the melatonin that you took a few months ago, um, do you take any other natural health products or medications, either prescribed or over the counter? Tylenol, just one pill once in a while. Okay. Uh, why is it? You have headaches. Okay, what kinds of headaches? How does it feel like where it's a pressure feeling? Okay, and okay, that's most likely a tension type headache. How often do you get it? About once a month? Okay. Oh, you were having it more often a year ago, right? The breakup, very stressful, absolutely. Okay, just make a note of that. Okay, and we're gonna ask you a little bit about your mental health. Again, please be as honest as you can with me. This is a safe space. There is no judgment. I know sometimes mental health can have a bit of a stigma, but here it's really, really important for us to investigate it because oftentimes some mental health conditions, especially depression and anxiety, can coincide with insomnia. It can either precipitate insomnia or make it worse, okay? And of course, insomnia can also cause or contribute to, to depression and anxiety. So it's very much a vicious cycle and I see it all the time in practice. It's actually one of the number th one things that we treat. You do have anxiety, okay. But no depression, okay. So for this questionnaire, we're going to rate the current, so past two weeks, severity if you're insomnia problem. So I'm going to have you rate 
0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, 0 being none, 1 being mild, 2 being moderate, 3 being severe, and 4 being very severe. Okay, so the first problem, difficulty falling asleep. How would you rate it subjectively, like based on your own perception? Difficulty staying asleep. Problems waking up too early. Okay. And how satisfied, dissatisfied are you with your current sleep pattern? So zero being very satisfied and four being very dissatisfied. I hear you. How noticeable to others do you think your sleep problem is in terms of impairing the quality of your life? Yeah, so similar to what I asked before as well. Okay. Zero being not at all noticeable and four being very much noticeable. How worried, distressed are you about your current sleep problem? Okay. And to what extent do you consider your sleep problem to interfere with your daily functioning? So for example, daytime fatigue, mood, ability to function at work, daily chores. Yeah. Okay. So just gonna add them up. Okay, so this is considered clinical insomnia of moderate severity. Okay, all right. And next we have the sleep hygiene index. So sleep hygiene, of course, is so important, having a good night's sleep, but our approach is we don't force you to do all the interventions at once. You choose one and you start with that and work on that for two weeks and then we implement another and another, unless you are feeling ambitious and want to tackle two or three at the same time. But I don't, definitely don't ask you to do all of it at once. Yes, because these habits we've had sometimes our whole lives and they can be very very difficult to change mm -hmm. so i'm going to have you score how true each statement is zero never one rarely two sometimes three frequent and four always okay number one i take daytime naps lasting two or more hours Yeah, otherwise you can't get anything done, right? I get that. I go to bed at different times from day to day. Yeah, okay. I get out of bed at different times from day to day. Except on the weekend, okay. I exercise to the point of sweating within one hour of going to bed. Don't really have much energy to exercise. I understand. I stay in bed longer than I should two or three times a week. Okay. I use alcohol, tobacco, or caffeine within four hours of going to bed or after going to bed. You're not a smoker? Okay, good. But you do drink alcohol. Mm. And it does help you sleep sometimes. Not so much, but it helps you cope. I get it. Okay. 
I do something that may wake me up before bedtime. For example, play video games, use the internet, or clean. Use the internet. Got it. It can be so difficult to leave those devices alone before bed. Hey, okay, I do the same thing. I go to bed feeling stressed, angry, upset, or nervous. Definitely stressed. Got it. I use my bed for things other than sleeping or sex. For example, watch television, read, eat, or study. Okay, got it. I sleep on an uncomfortable bed, for example, poor mattress or pillow, too much or not enough blankets. Yes, in busy cities like Toronto, you can absolutely have too much noise pollution or light pollution. Mm -hmm. I actually have just the thing for you. So this is what's called a sleep mask. Let me open it up. This is my favorite sleep mask. It's by a company called Monta Sleep, and um, they have these adjustable eyepieces. So they're super comfortable for you to sleep in. I use these personally um, to go to sleep and also to take naps, okay? And I'll tell you more about the nap bit. We preferably want you to be taking a nap that is less than 30 minutes, okay? So that it doesn't disturb your nighttime sleep. And it should also preferably be before 4 p.m. But these can be really great for blocking out the light and allowing you to sleep, yes. And it comes with a pair of earplugs. Do you want to? I can show you how to put it on. So let me just adjust this based on. Okay. So I'm going to put it. And it tells you it says your nose, so you want it pointing in that direction. So I put it around here. I think that fits you pretty well. And let me just put that on for you, okay? How does that feel? Good? Okay, let me take it off. Good. So that is complimentary. We're going to give that to you. And hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. Okay. So next statement. I do important work before bedtime. For example, paying bills, schedule, or study. Okay. And lastly, I think, plan, or worry when I am in bed. Okay, so again, just adding this all up. So those are all the questionnaires, but I am going to send you home with something called the sleep diary. So we have the instructions, 
and then a bunch of sleep diaries. I'll have the receptionist photocopy a few more for you, but it's very, very simple. I want you to fill this out every day for the next two weeks until I see you next, okay? All right. All right, let's go ahead and begin your physical exams. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Relax. Okay, just raise your hand and pump your fist ten times, just like that. Okay, good. Your blood pressure is normal, 120 over 80. No concern there. Open up your mouth. And I'm just going to take your pulse. Take it on the other side. No fever. All right. Let's start by taking a look at your eyes. So just look straight at me. Just looking at your cornea and your lens, as well as your iris, seeing if there's any shadows, any opacities. Okay. Now follow the light. Look at the pen. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm just going to lower your eyelids. Okay. Look up. Good, okay. 
I'm just gonna palpate around, just seeing if there's any swelling. Okay. And also looking at your eyebrows, seeing if there's any thinning, any issues there. No good. Okay, let me also palpate your left nose. Any pain right there? Okay, good. What about right here? No. Right. Okay. All right. Open up your mouth. Say ah. any problems with your oral health? Okay. Looks like you have very good dental hygiene. Raise your tongue to the top of the roof. Okay. Lower it. Say ah one more time. Uh, have you had your tonsils removed? Yeah, I don't see them. Okay, good. So I do want to do an ophthalmoscopic exam, not because I think there's anything wrong with your eyes, but because ophthalmoscopy can tell us about the condition of your cardiovascular health, about your blood vessels, how healthy they are. Okay. So let's take a look inside. It is a little bright, but we won't be in there for too long, okay? So I'm going to start on this side. All right. How much it looks just straight ahead right there? Give you a little break. I'm gonna head over to the other side. Okay. All right. Again, look just straight ahead. Okay. Finding that optic disc. See no hemorrhaging, no juice and spots, no oxidate. Okay, can you 
take a look directly into my thalmoscope. Immaculate will be good. And I'm just going to come back to the side quickly. Closer. Okay, found the optic disc. Good. And following the blood vessels. No abnormalities of any kind. And look into my ophthalmoscope. Good. Whew. How are you feeling? Okay, you did a really good job. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to take a look into your ears. So it might tickle a little bit, but hopefully it shouldn't cause any pain. If it does, let me know, okay? Just making sure this is working. Good. Okay. I think you're definitely due for ear cleaning. <laughs> it can't quite. Let me try to push past it. Okay. That's not bad. Alright, tympanic membrane is intact. Not cloudy. No fluids. There's no redness. Yeah, I don't see any signs of infection here. Uh, let me just look a little bit deeper. One second. Are you feeling any pain? No, okay, good. Yeah, just a little ticklish. I know. Okay. Oh. Looks good. Okay, looks good. Let me just take it out. Alright, no sign of infections in that ear. Now let me take a look at the other side. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, much cleaner on this side. Lovely eardrum. No scars. No redness. Cone of land is present. Medial bottom corner. And no effusion. No swelling. No erythema. Discharge of any kind. Ah, very good. a gown for you and I'll have you change into it and then we're gonna check your heart your lungs your abdomen okay All right. So change into that and I will be right back.
right, let's take a listen of your heart. Do sounds? No. Extra sound. Okay. You just breathe normally. Very good. And then down here. Listening to the tricuspid valve. And then the mitral valve. Or the mitral area. Okay. I did notice a bit of a murmur in your mitral valve. There's some turbulence in the blood flow. Have you ever noticed this before? Okay, so your GP told you that you, for quite a while, okay, okay. All right, have you done an ECG for this? An electrocardiogram? Yeah, everything came back normal. Okay. Well, we'll definitely also, um, during the sleep study, we'll pay attention to your heart and everything, uh, as well as your respiration and many other things. This could be caused by stress and anxiety, but it could also be a more serious cause, so I just want to investigate that further at our next appointment. Okay, just make a few notes. How long would you say you've known about this murmur? Five years? Okay. okay. Now let me listen to your lungs, okay? Breathe in, breathe out, good, breathe in, breathe out, very good, breathe in, and out, okay, breathe in, and out, Breathe in and out. Very good. On the side here. Breathe in and out. Okay. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Very good. Breathe in. And out. One more time on the side. Breathe in and out. Okay. Now I'm going to come behind you and do the lung exam on the posterior side. Okay. So I'm just right behind you. Just gonna listen to 
the top here. Breathe in and out. Very good. Breathe in and out. Okay. Give yourself a hug. Okay. Breathe in and out. Very nice. Breathe in and out. Good. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Are you getting dizzy? No? Okay, good. Breathe in and out. Okay, just a few more. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Okay, very nice. Good news is the sounds of your lungs are normal. There's no adventitious sounds, so extra lung sounds that we don't want. However, I did notice that uh, your lung capacity isn't very strong. You're not, when you're breathing and you're not taking in a very deep breath. Can you show me again how you breathe? Okay. Breathe in. And out. Okay. So, you are more of a chest breather. You're expanding the chest rather than expanding the abdomen. And it's important to expand the abdomen when you breathe. Mm -hmm. This will be really helpful for relieving stress and really getting you to take a nice deep breath in. Okay, now I'm going to be palpating your abdomen. Just slip on the gloves. Okay, I'm just going to lift up your gown slightly. Good. And then just palpating. How are your bowel movements? Are you having at least one a day? Okay, okay, yeah. A little constipated, huh? Yeah, I can definitely prescribe something for that. Um, we'll start with nutrition and lifestyle, and then if that doesn't work, we can um, prescribe something very gentle, okay? Not a medication. I usually start off with just a very gentle herb mix, so peppermint tea and chamomile tea, and I find that that works wonders. Okay. Doesn't seem like you had any pain when I was palpating there. Let me just take a listen. Definitely some reduced bowel sounds over here, which makes sense you are since you are constipated. It's really interesting because with anxiety, you can either see increased bowel movements or decreased, but there's definitely a disturbance in digestion. Okay, just listen over here. Okay, very good. All right, so is there anything else you'd like me to know? Any other concerns about your health? Nothing at the moment? Okay. Well, if you ever think of something, feel free to send over an email or call us, right? Okay. 
So I do have a prescription for you. The first thing is, and I'm going to write this down for you, okay? Well, the very first thing is to complete the sleep diary, okay? You definitely have to make sure you do that every single day for the next two weeks. So I'll hand that over to you. But on top of that, I would like you to drink six to eight glasses of water a day. It's hard, I know. Um, so this glass full is about one cup, okay? So you're going to have six to eight of those. That's going to help with so many different things in your body, so many metallic metabolic processes, but also with detoxification and of course improving your bowel movements, okay? It can also potentially help with headaches. All right, so make sure to stay well hydrated. The other thing is I do want you to make sure you're eating enough fruit and vegetables. Okay. Yeah, it's it's hard to. What do you eat for breakfast? Yeah. Toast with some cream cheese, uh-huh. And a coffee, okay. Yeah. To help you with your energy totally makes sense. Can you add one piece of fruit? So an apple with that? Yeah? Perfect. That's an extra um, serving of fruit and vegetables. Now can you add one cup of either raw veggies or half a cup of cooked vegetables to your lunch and your dinner? And so not just potatoes, but on top of the potatoes, I'd like for you to eat something preferably leafy and green or something very colorful. You like carrots? Okay, carrots are perfect. Um, do you like let's see, broccoli? No, okay. Um, lettuce? Okay. Arugula? Arugula? Interesting. Yeah, arugula is very good. The, the bitter green really also helps with the liver. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so... Yeah, there you go. That's a start. So I want you to do that in order to increase the fiber intake and that'll help with your constipation as well and just your overall health. Okay, so those two things, I will write those down for you. Okay. So we'll start with that. But as we continue to see each other, I do want to steadily increase the number of fruits and vegetables you eat and then also work on healthy fats, stuff like that. But I'm definitely of the mind to start slow and use actionable steps that you can actually take and then we'll build from there, okay? For you. Now, I'm also going to give you a tea and an herbal supplement. I'll just be right back. is passion flower extract in a tablet form so let me show you so it looks like this and i'm just giving you um just about 10 doses here we're going to see if it works for you so you're going to start off just taking one every night before you go to bed okay and it should help to just relax you and get you to bed. And then we're also going to 
have you take this dress rest tea. It has Centella Asiatica, Leonaris, Cardiasa, his Hibiscus species, Nepeta, Cataria, Rosa, Canina, and Melissa Officinalis. So these are fantastic herbs for really just calming you down, releasing your stress, helping with anxiety, okay? So I'm going to recommend one tablespoon of this. You're gonna steep it for 10 to 20 minutes. So what you can do is just use a tea steeper, okay? And you're gonna put it inside, put some hot water over it, steep it for 10 to 20 minutes, and then you're gonna drink it up. You can also add it to a thermos, that tends to work really well. And I want you to sip on this tea pretty much all day. So you wanna get, you know that six to eight glasses of water? About half of that can be this tea, all right? Very good. All right, and as for your coffee, make sure that you're drinking it only in the morning, okay? So after noon, try not to take any naps, or at least take them before 4 p.m. Absolutely no coffee, okay? And don't forget your Monta sleep mask. Use this for your naps and for your sleeps. So let me just bag this all up for you. Okay, so the sleep mask. The teas and the plastic one. And then your sleep tiles. For you, your present, it's gonna help with your sleep, help you to kind of cope for now. In two weeks, we're going to see you back and we're going to be doing a sleep study on you, as well as just kind of monitoring how your sleep is going, what else we can implement, what's working, what's not working, okay? All right, well, thank you so much for coming in. Honestly, take your time, get dressed, get ready, and then go out and meet the receptionist and she'll help you from there, okay? Thank you so much, I'll see you later. Bye, take care.